Hey guys, Joe here, and here to talk to you about why you really don't need to be great at Super Smash Bros. Now, I know in our community, a lot of times people look down upon if they aren't the best player in the world or if they just can't beat their friends, but I want to go over a little bit about this, shed some light just on my opinions on this, and talk about why it's okay to not be the best at Super Smash Bros. And let's just get right into this. So the first point I want to make is that this game really is all for fun, that's why it was made, and that's why games are made. So, if you're a person that really doesn't enjoy competitive 1v1, then you should not play competitive 1v1. If you're playing it just because somebody else tells you to play it, or because you're pressing into it by the community, then I'd say you're playing it for the wrong reason, you probably won't be playing it for much longer, and you'll get bored of the game a lot faster. If you really don't enjoy this, just play some casual, play with items on, play random stages, play whatever you want. If you don't enjoy that 1v1, then don't do it. Also, a lot of the times, if you try to play competitive 1v1 and you don't enjoy it, it's pretty easy to tell they aren't enjoying it, and a lot of the time, like, it's just not fun to play against somebody else you can just tell doesn't really want to be there at that time. So I'd say, just don't play it in case you really don't want to, and if your friends only want to play 1v1, then just tell them that you want to play something different and hopefully they'll listen. So the next thing is just if you actually do like 1v1, which I know a lot of people like, like me, and this thing is just to realize that it's okay to lose to an opponent and still have a lot of fun. Now you have to realize that every single game has one winner and one loser, that means 50% of the time, at least one person's losing, you know? So pretty much you have to realize that it's okay to lose a game, but still have an enjoyable experience. Of course, all the time we hear about these heroes like Esam, like Zero, like Axe, I guess, like Mango, all these different guys that win over and over and over again, seem to have a great experience, a great time, and all this stuff, a little bit of stress, but we never really get to hear about the guys that, you know, do okay, get about a 50-50 win ratio, and all that stuff. It's just not as glorified, and I can see why, but at the same time, sometimes the people that aren't winning all the time have the most fun. And a lot of times you just have to kind of get used to just not winning all the time. That's really what you got to get used to. You won't win all the time, especially if you're fighting at a pretty hard locals. You might even win like less than 25% of the time. But still, even if you don't win, it's really easy to have a fun time. Just try to go offensive, try to go defensive, do whatever you want, do whatever you have the most fun with, and just try to enjoy the game instead of just trying to get a ton of wins under your belt. The next thing is that in my life, personally, some of the most funny people I've been around and some of the most enjoyable people I've been around in the Smash Bros. community really aren't that great at Smash Brothers. Now, of course, they do put in a lot of work in the game, they still try a lot in the game, but they may not beat the best players in the entire world, and that is definitely fine. It's okay to be good at the game, you know, maybe not the best, maybe not the worst, but still just have a really fun, enjoyable time to try to make it fun for everybody you're fighting, and to also maybe put some time into other stuff. Now, this can also apply other than just the funny guy in your group or whatever, or just the people that like to have a lot of fun. This could apply to people like YouTubers, like commentators. I'm sure, they're all pretty good in their own right, but at the same time, they really do focus on one other thing. This could also apply to forum leaders, to people on Reddit, like the Reddit leaders. There's a lot of different people that this could apply to, and even though you may not be the best, you can still contribute a lot to the community and still have a really good and fun time. So another thing is, if you are at a local scene, if you play at locals somewhat often, then your opinion actually does still matter even though you aren't the greatest person in Smash Bros and you're just not the best person around. Now of course, on the internet, nobody will care about your opinion unless you're the top players, which is really dumb, but that's just kind of how it works. But if you do have a local scene, I figured out for myself that really, people will actually listen to you. People do care about your opinions and they want to know what you said, want to know what you think, want to know the optimal punishes from you, and want to know good and mad matchups and why. People just want to know all this different stuff, or at least just want to talk to you, learn different stories, all this different type of random crap. People really care about your opinion in locals or even in some tournaments, and you just kind of have to put that out there. You have to put out your opinion and realize that even though you aren't the best, your opinion still does count for something even though people online will say that it doesn't. Finally, I'd say you are not a noob or terrible at Super Smash Bros. just because you cannot beat the best players or just because you can't beat tournament players, even if some people online may call you that. If you're a decently skilled player, if you can know how to do all your attacks, know how to do your smashes, do a little bit of combos, you're actually much better than a lot of the players that do play with Super Smash Bros. Now, of course, this is a, like, kids game. I guess that's where it was marketed to. Of course, many of us do play it that aren't exactly young kids anymore, but that is what it was originally for, so of course there are a lot of very bad players, and you're already above all those people, pretty much. Like, you're a very good player. For the most right, if you're watching this video, you're probably a pretty decent player. You probably learned quite a bit, at least from my videos or from other sources. And even though you can't beat the top player, you're still pretty darn good. Even if you can't beat your friends, you're still pretty darn good. If you understand how most characters work, even how every character in the game works, if you know all their different matchups, if you know even the matchups for that one character that you play, you're still a lot better than most of the people that play the game, and you're not a noob, and you're not terrible at Super Smash Brothers. This is something I just really wanted to go over. A lot of times people get downed, people get called names, or just people just get called dumb or whatever, bad, just because they aren't the best at the game. But you don't really have to be the best. 
as long as you're pretty good I'd say that's fine by me and that's just my opinion but hopefully this video does cover that a little bit if you are a little bit more of a casual player or if you just aren't the best competitive player and you're just kind of getting down by everybody thank you guys for watching though I hope that you did enjoy I hope that this did kind of go over some stuff or did help you if you were in this situation at all make sure to like comment and subscribe I hope you all enjoyed and I'll be seeing you all next time